Bradley Robert Edwards, the man convicted of two of the horrific Claremont serial killings in Perth, will almost certainly die in a WA prison. Today, Justice Stephen Hall sentenced Edwards to life in jail with a minimum parole period of 40 years. He'll be 92 by then. Late this afternoon, I spoke with investigative journalist Stephen Pennells, who's been following the case from the very beginning. Steve, a minimum of 40 years. Uh, you can't be too upset with that. You can't be. I mean, the prosecution did ask for uh, um, a non-parole, I mean, sorry, life without parole, which is what the families are wanting as well. But as it stands, he won't be able to apply for parole until he's 92, so chances are he won't survive. But, yeah, look, I think it's fair to say he's going to spend the rest of his life behind bars. We discovered that Edwards wouldn't speak with psychiatrists despite a court order. What's that all about? That's interesting. I mean, it may have some legal legal strategy. I mean, he, the, the signs are he will appeal the case, and he's never confessed to the crimes. He's never given any indication. I mean, this is someone whose crimes were brutal, horrific, premeditated, but all through the court case, all through the trial, through the police interview, he was quiet, stoic, polite. He never showed any hint of anger, any hint of um, the murderer that he was. So, so perhaps this is all part of a strategy, who knows? But it's, um, you know, it's hard because he's a man who, who didn't give answers and he still has that control over the families in a way by, by holding back, you know, what he knows. And especially the third victim, I mean, Sarah Spears, he wasn't convicted of her killing, but the judge said there was a strong likelihood he was um, responsible and her body hasn't been found. So the families, or her family, I mean, above all, just wanted some, some sort of answers and he hasn't given them. Yeah, sad for them that they don't get any closure. And you don't think there's any likelihood that he'll tell police about where that body is? I don't think so. I mean, I'm not a criminal psychologist, but I've, I've spoken to a few about this case and others, and they, they, they tend to tell me that when someone's responsible for crimes like this, a series of crimes, if they're caught, they can go one of two ways. They can either boast about the killings and almost revel in the notoriety, or they can just refuse to say anything and, and hold that information over, over the victims and the public as some sort of control. And Ivan Milat was one of those. I mean, he went to his grave never admitting what he'd done and never talking about other victims. And I think if we haven't seen Edwards admit to anything now, then I, I, I can't see him doing it in the future. You've got the documentary coming up, the, mm. uh, you know, the catching of the Claremont killer, the untold story in early February. What can we expect? Well, we, we go through the whole case. We talk to police and, and families and friends of the missing girls, but, but the whole documentary is grounded in, in a pretty extraordinary interview with, with a victim that, that, that didn't give evidence of the court case, one of his earliest victims who escaped. She fought back and, um, and, and survived the attack. And she's never spoken before. Her, her identity was suppressed and, and she's granted permission to, to have that lifted by the courts and she and she's she's telling her story and it's and it's quite extraordinary. Steve Pennells, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Chris.